Okay. So, I mean, you're, you're a solo artist now. I, I, I see Tame One, you know what I'm saying? He's got a group, you know what I mean? You're laughing, you're chuckling. He's got a group now. Like, how do you feel about that? How, like, how, it's, how many, it's, it's, groups, it's, it's, how many it's, groups has he been in since he left me? Two, three, I don't Weatherman, know. Eastern Conference All-Stars. Uh, like, Leak Brothers. This new thing he got. Uh, uh, triple S. Yeah, that shit. Close, and it's dusted it down. Yeah. Like, to me, it seems like he keeps reinventing himself in each group or, or what have you. Like, not, if you don't want to answer the question, no, it's cool. Okay. Like, how do you feel about his music now versus when you knew him coming up in the game? You know what I'm saying? When you guys, because obviously you guys used to write 16s together, come up with ideas, fresh hooks, cuts, all that shit. You know, the foundation of uh, hip hop artifacts. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So now it seems as though he's reinventing himself. He's become maybe a different MC. Maybe he's expanding. How do you feel about that personally and as a as a fan maybe? All right. Personally, I don't feel that shit because. Wait, what you say? You gotta look in the camera and say that. I don't feel that shit because that shit ain't what we started from. Number one, whatever we was doing as a group, and now that he's not in it, he don't want to do it. I don't understand it. I hear the same shit y'all hear, and it's not the same dude that I was with. The voice not the same, the, the content of the lyrics not the same. He ain't the same. As far as the group shit, I look at that as all him just taking the chance to say, I'm not doing nothing else right now, so I jump into this. Yeah. That's not. Do you, do you read like honestly like to me if if that was me as part of me and Seek you know what I mean if that was me or that was Seek I would reach out to him and talk to him. I Have you reached out to him? Way. I'm gonna tell you something. World, listen. It was going down on the second album on That's Them. I did a lot of things to try to keep Homeboy under control. Me and this dude right. So it, it's only so much you can do for a grown man. We all grown first. Nobody don't take care of me like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you get to a certain point as a man, it's like, damn, you know, I got kids. Yeah. I ain't got three kids. And he told me that when he blacked out on the plane. He only got two kids, that one kid I had at the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he told me, don't worry about me. Little L ain't on this plane right now. Don't, you know, I ain't your kid. Do you, homeboy? Because right now that's what's happening. And y'all hear this man music. Y'all done got me started. If, if you want to hear what happened to the artifacts, you listen to me, as far as the progression of it. You want to see what happened with drugs and what that shit do to you, you listen to Spasmatic. I'm going to leave it out there because I don't fucking go on my wax and, and portray some shit that I ain't. If you're going to spit something at me, spit it at me. Not one verse, not through the hood, you come in my face and you say that shit like the MC you're supposed to be. Two. I'm by myself, two albums, on my own, not no groups, only persons I was affiliated with in this music has been producers and MCs like Sean Price and OC and, and, and Sock on, on the tracks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to step back a little bit more. And that's how I feel about that. You know, okay. I, 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 homeboy, I, it's not so, the same. Alright, so, so we saw, we, we just heard you say that. I, I'm a betting man, you know, I buy scratch tickets. I gamble a little bit, go to the casino sometimes. I used to win. Okay. If I was to put money on the artifacts doing one song together again. You would lose the bet. I would lose the bet. Bet, you could bet. And All would, your money, you're gonna lose. And would you would you ever regret that? Nope. Cause I'm here today on my second album, about to work on my third with K Def. Now if I was with him right now today, after we did that second album, do I think I'll be standing here in front of the Western Front? Standing with my peoples right now, with Rex Shop, for bringing me here, nah, it wouldn't be happening right now. And even if we did do that, the chemistry is out the window. <laughs> out of the window. <laughs> okay, speaking of five right, year plan. plan. Next time you're gonna see me, I'm gonna be on your screen in your living room somewhere, just like yelling crazy, laid back. You might catch me on MTV Cribs. I ain't gonna front, yo. It's gonna be like bananas. That's what you're gonna see me at. Five year plan. Buy your plan. All right. You will be looking at a company called the Guidance Counselor, and it'll be run by me. And I will be helping dudes. Like you said, I don't want to run no label. I don't want to be a manager. I want to be a guidance counselor. You come to me. And you need something done. You need a bio done. You need photos done. You need a demo done. I got access to all things, and I will take care of you. 
and you're going your way, if you need to see me again, come back to me. That's a come up within itself, but it's something I know will work. Cause everybody wonder how the fuck I do it, and I'm gonna share it. See, like that's that's what I love right there because it's like me and Seek, uh, uh, artist by the name of Cadence. I don't know if you heard of him, but he's out here, Raw Produce, which is a, a phenomenal group. He sort of he was our mentor, and he and he did the same thing. You know what I mean? He did he looked out for us? Like I couldn't even pay him for what he did for us. You know what I'm saying? And that's a lot of a lot of cats. You know what I'm saying? Coming up are gonna love that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that is that's not about yo. You owe me hundred dollars. You owe me three hundred dollars for this shit. You know that's some real soulful shit. The more people you come, the more people you you attract. That's how you make your dough. This this shit is a job first. You know, don't let nobody tell you that it's not. But just like work, you get paid to do what you do, and you gotta like it. Red, five year plan. Five year plan. Probably gonna lose a little bit more hair from head spins. <laughs> and fuck me up for life. I'm 23 years old now. Light on top. It's okay, man. We all go. It's all good. Yeah. But eventually, Shave that shit, yo. Revolution. <laughs> Maybe past five years. Eventually, like kind of what he said, but I like to look for you and not necessarily. Maybe each other people, but I kind of I want to show the youth a different side of hip hop. Maybe teach them and the communities get them involved in the b boying. Maybe you know get some rap writers down, teach them the basics of rap writing, something like that, or MCing, so they can come off. If they don't want to do music, hopefully just that influence will put them in a positive light. You know what I mean, they want to do something positive. All right, so to clack clack their guns. For <laughs> <laughs> the so I know I, I know this doesn't pertain to you, but I know this may pertain to you, but you two. How are you able to just be artists and not be in, on the plantation, so to speak, on the nine to five grind, like the rest of a lot of MCs and a lot of promoters that are trying to do their thing? Like, how are you able to do that? Just keep making good records, man. I mean, that's really the, the whole shit about it. You know, when people stop caring about your music, that's when you fall. Mm -hmm. But if you can make those records that when they hear you, they don't think about what you did in your past, they're you. only listening for today. So if you can make that product that's like that, always, man, I don't give a fuck if you're 40 years old. Look at KRS, still out here. Yeah. Like it's a lot of cats. Just dropped another record. Like, and I heard some of them. It's dope. It's dope. It's dope. It's dope. You, and, and I'm going to tell, tell y'all something, world, hip hop world, the most important thing that y'all got to stop doing is dating your artists. How come with rock and roll, R&B, soul, Aretha Franklin can get on stage and do a motherfucking show Arrow today? Aerosmith, Arrow Smith, Smith, Rolling Stones, Paul fucking McCartney, Phil Collins, period. Oh, hip hop is the only music that dates their arts. If we are uh, on a five year album, like you got five albums, you already old. Yeah. To, to cast today. Yeah. So the, your pioneers don't downplay it. Okay. Let it be what it is. It, it, it's your history. You can't erase that. You can you can say whatever you want about uh, the dude sound dated or whatever. Be fucking glad that you still be able to see this cat or cats make records. There's a million dudes right now that we don't see. Yeah. Look at Jay Rowe from the that Alcoholics. Yeah. Live in Sweden. So that's telling you something about what he money. feel about hip hop. He went out there and made a damn open the store, and still doing music, still doing alcohol, he's still doing himself. So I say, hold your idols up into the sky. You know, put up, give him some light. You know, it's, it's history already made, so there's nothing you can do to make him feel any worse. But if you don't support that music, cast. You know, feel that shit. So keep it up.